Howdy tubers, welcome back to the Zach Life. So I'm soon to upload a playlist of videos that will each tackle an aspect of, of the field operations of what it takes to make a living in the shallow well life. Uh, we're gonna go everything from uh, downhole pumps, probably some electrical tank batteries, how you sell oil, who buys it, separators, water pumps, injection wells. This will be the first video that I upload. It won't be necessarily the first video in the playlist. I want to try to put them all in order, kind of as a natural order of progression uh, from wells to selling. Uh, but I don't have the opportunity to make them all necessarily in that order. Uh, you can click, there'll be a, a link to the playlist in the description and, and one at the end of the video you can watch. So what are we doing today? We're going to specifically look at the oil and water separator. And then we're going to look at generally the setup uh, that is what's behind me. We've got an oil tank, a uh, separate oil and water separator, water tank, and an injection pump. I'd like to kind of go over the setup. Uh, this is a pretty typical setup for us, uh, but specifically we'd like to gear this around the water separator. So here is a typical oil and water separator. So there's a couple of wells scattered throughout this pasture. They come up here to a couple of tees right there in the grass, and then it's got a line buried that comes right up here in the back. And this is where the oil and water uh, mixed together enter this separator So the fluid enters the back of the separator and it makes its way to the front and that transition from the front to the back Is when gravity separates the two the inside of this is hollow. Uh, there's nothing in it complex There's a steel baffle that is in the middle here. Uh, this is structural and it also keeps the fluid as it's blown into the back uh, if it comes in at high velocity it keeps from being able to churn Sort of past the middle here. It's got to come over the top and the bottom so on the front here, we've got a sight glass. This will show us our oil water contact point, uh, how much oil and how much water is in here. Uh, you want this relatively in the center. This one is a little bit high. We'll go over that in a second. That's actually why I'm over here to jack with this thing. Uh, this water level seems to have been creeping up and that's a possible sign of some problems. So inside this separator is a float. This float is a, about the size of a five gallon bucket, but a little bit longer. It's made out of a really, really heavy walled pipe. Uh, it's heavy, it weighs a couple hundred pounds, and it's made exactly so that it will float in salt water, but it will, it will sink in oil. So the float floats in the contact point between the oil and water, on the oil and water level inside this separator. It's connected through this trunnion. Uh, there's a, it's, it's, it's on like a, a, about a one inch rod that screws into this piece on the inside uh, and then the the float is connected to the end of that rod uh, the the mechanism that works this comes out through a rod here in this packing and ties on uh, to this arm now what this floats job is to do is to actuate this dump valve this is the water output of the separator so this this connection goes in the bottom of the separator uh, the water all the water is already separated comes into this valve and this valve as I say is controlled by the float so <clears throat> if the water level or the oil level go down the contact point go down in the separator uh, it will pull this up and this shuts this valve this shuts any more water from being able to go out because the water level is too low in the separator as the water level rises this goes down and this opens this valve and this allows the water uh, that's in the separator to travel through the valve comes out of the valve makes a little lap under the under the separator and goes into the bottom of the water tank there so right here's where the oil comes out of the separator uh, this comes out of the top this is just a, a connection that's welded in the top of it it's nothing special it comes back through a valve here and into the oil dump valve now this oil dump valve is simply a back pressure regulator uh, it opens and controls the pressure on the back side of this valve which would be the separator the flow lines, the wells, uh, everything. Now, we got a gauge here, and we'll look at this gauge, and this gauge has got three, about three and a quarter PSI on it. You can see it's kind of going up and down. Now, it was a higher just a minute ago. I've been jacking with a dump valve here, and that may have something to do with it. But the pressure is still relatively low, and I can hear stuff going through this valve. And this is what initiated this video, or this, or me looking at this separator. So quick recap of how these things work. When the water level rises, this arm goes down because the float comes up. That opens this valve. The pressure on the separator pushes the water through the valve to the line of the water tank. 
When this valve opens and the pressure falls, the falling pressure causes the oil dump valve to shut so, when, so no more oil comes out and goes in the tank. When the water level falls, this comes up, the float goes down, that shuts the water dump valve. The shutting of the water dump valve causes the pressure in the separator to rise. The rising pressure causes the oil dump valve to open because it's operated off back pressure. So your separator has got to carry enough pressure to push the water out the water dump valve through the water line into the water tank and then overcome the hydrostatic pressure of the tank being full. Now right now the tank is empty so it would take you know literally zero pounds uh, because this is measuring from a higher, stat higher hydrostatic spot than the level in the tank. It would take zero pounds to push it there but if the tank was full it would take probably three or four psi. And of course you want a little bit more pressure than that you don't want one right on the ragged edge some places our water tanks are a long way away from the separator and you've got to run 20 or 30 pounds <clears throat> but we like to run as little as we can get away with that's still plenty to not cause us problems the less pressure you run the less pressure on your wells the less likely you are to have stuffing box leaks etc and i would like to have this thing hang out about seven or eight pounds now you can hear this inside this tank it's still rolling and dribbling in this tank and it's been the same since this thing was like three or four uh and i saw it the other day it was about 15 and i think there's something going wrong with this valve so the big potential disaster you can have with a oil and water separator is for the separator to put all the water that the lease makes into the oil tank uh, this can happen one of three common ways i can think of uh, if your float gets a hole and it sinks it'll do it that's not really that common usually the separator gets a hole in the shell the separator goes bad uh, before the float does uh, if you have something that plugs up with your water dump valve or the water dump leg as it goes through the tank or somebody shuts a valve or whatever uh, it's not just going to pressure up till something blows up it's simply going to open the oil dump valve and it's going to push all the oil in the water and all the crap that's in the separator into the oil tank of course water sinks water doesn't float so if you fill your oil tank up with water, it won't run over with water, it'll run over with oil. You'll float all the oil out of it initially, uh, you know, before it turns to water. And uh, you know, that's one of my biggest deals. If you work in the oil business, that's the big deal is you keep stuff off the ground. And this is a way that you can have a, an absolute environmental disaster, even with top notch equipment. Uh, the other failure point, which is one I think I'm fixing to have here, is if you get a piece of rubber or a piece of junk or a piece of crap in the oil dump valve uh, it can actually be held open now to remedy this problem or to, to do our best to remedy it <clears throat> i've kind of spoken before our water tank has got a shut off uh, switch in it i don't know if it's if it's on camera or not but you can see there's a wire hanging out the back of the, of the tank and that's just one of those little dinky float switches like it's on a sump pump is hanging in the tank and if the water level gets too high uh, it it flips it up and it shuts the lease down but as far as the oil tank goes on this lease and i've got several like this i try to set these up where they're next to each other you'll notice up here there's a white pvc pipe that comes out of the top of the tank or out of the side of the tank at the top and runs over into the water tank so if you have a catastrophic failure of something in your separator and it fills the oil tank up with water instead of putting the oil on the ground it puts it in the water tank now this is still a, a, a bad deal because you're gonna take the oil that you work for for a month or two making a load of oil and you're gonna put it in the water tank and you're gonna pump it back in the ground. But it's still better. I would rather have it pumped back in the ground and lose it than I would have it dumped on the ground and lose it. I think there's probably a piece of rubber or something stuck in this valve. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the valve. There's a valve down here on the, on the water dump. We're gonna shut this valve, shut this valve, and we're gonna let this thing pressure up. I'd like to get it up to about 20 pounds, but I don't wanna quite spring my gauge. Maybe we'll see if we can get the gauge to point straight down. At that point, I'm gonna jerk this valve open. It should fully open this dump valve. We'll hit roll in the tank, and hopefully it'll blow whatever's in here out. All right, this is about as high as I dare get this without running my gauge. So that's about all I can do for this right now. Uh, I'm gonna watch it for the rest of the day, 
it's about lunchtime. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. All right, so I came back out here. It's 3.30, and we are in the catastrophic failure mode that I described. Uh, nothing bad has happened yet, but that's just because we hadn't had enough time for it to happen. Uh, the pressure on the separator is setting dead on zero, and I can still hear oil or fluid or something rolling in the oil tank. And so what that means is, is that um, the oil dump valve, the back pressure regulator, is stuck open. And for whatever reason, we're going to take it apart and find out. We didn't help it any by what we did earlier by letting the pressure on the separator pressure up and trying to blow whatever was in it out. We didn't help it, so we've got to take it apart and fix it. All right, so the very first course of action is, as I explained in my electrical video, I've got shutdown systems on my wells. And so the first thing I'm going to do is this little switch will turn off all the wells. So we got all the wells turned off. All right, let's get after it. First course of action is I'm going to shut this valve. I guess the second course after I shut the wells off. Now the problem is, is this line that goes up to the oil tank is full of oil. These valves here, these good chem rays, have got a port on either side. Uh, you can actually move this line to over here to for these to work off either downstream pressure or upstream pressure. But the cool thing about that is they've got this plug here <clears throat> that I've actually already broke loose. And we can just take a bucket and hopefully not get too drenched and we can pull this plug out and catch all the oil that's in this line. And then this little line has got to come off. All right, and then it's got all these bolts. Pull all these bolts out, that was loose. They're all pretty, pretty, not super tight. Now this thing should just come off just like that so if we look down in the in this body we can see some crap what is this i don't have any idea but it is at the very least some of our problem how this works is we've got the the fluid that comes through this pipe it comes up through this hole in the center and then there's a flat rubber deal we'll show you in just a second it seals off and as that flat rubber deal comes up that lets it leak around this and then the fluid comes from this cavity out and up into the tank and then this is the flat little rubber deal that i was talking about that seals to that to that ring inside the housing now i think i can already tell this feels stiff now i need to knock this apart there's a diaphragm in here this might run all everywhere well, that's kind of nasty in there Big spring. So I don't really see any problem with this. I think it was just full of crap. We'll put it all back together and uh, kind of watch it as it goes. So the diaphragm looks good. These little washers have got sort of a mating surface here. There's a raised spot here that correlates with some little ridges. Uh, this is what actually makes this seal. And so this thing goes on first, then the diaphragm, then the big washer. All right, so how this works, you've got this thing here that goes on top of that of that diaphragm. You've got this big spring. You've got this plate, and then the bolt that's in the end of this is what actually pushes 
against the spring. Anyway, the spring tension keeps this pushed out, which seals off against that, that hole that's in the housing. And then you've got pressure uh, that's on the, the, the back side uh, with a little tube that's put, hooked to here. And what this pressure does is this pressure pushes out on this diaphragm. And when the pressure in this under this diaphragm is enough to collapse the spring, it pulls this back in and opens the valve. All right, so we go gasket, this doohickey, uh, that thing that the spring sits on, the spring. I'm going to go ahead and start this just so we'll know it's all lined up. And then the top housing. I'm going to turn the wells on. We'll let the uh, pressure start building. Okay, so this thing's up to 15 pounds. I guess that this is set about 10. And the way I guess that is that's about as tight as you can get it by hand without a wrench. So if this works correctly, when we open this valve, it should be wide open and the pressure should rapidly fall. It's climbing fast now. Should rapidly fall down to, you know, between 8 and 12 pounds and then disbarring a few gas bubbles or something in it that might disturb it. Uh, it should it should stabilize within just a matter of a few seconds. Well, it looks like that's going to be right on the money. Ten. I bet it's closer to nine once it straightens out. That is absolutely working. So the next thing is I'm gonna open the water dump valve. This should pretty much relieve all the pressure since the separator is completely full of water. It'll all go to the water tank. And then we'll listen to make sure that this valve shuts completely off. I believe it has. I hear a gas bubble or two going through it, but I don't think there's any fluid going through it. All right, mission accomplished. So another day in the Zach life, another problem was solved. I appreciate you watching. I'm actually fixing to do another video on a different kind of separator that kind of goes more of the historical aspect of the oil field instead of what's relevant today. But I think it's neat. It's a valveless, pressureless separator that works only off gravity. Anyway, if you'd like to watch that video, you can click on it. It'll be right up there in the corner of the screen. That'll take you to that video. Or if you'd like to see the playlist, you can click on the playlist right there. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and all the good things. And I'll catch you on the next one.